one minute. T minus fifty seconds. T minus forty seconds. T minus thirty seconds. T minus twenty seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome and thank you for joining us in this program. I now humbly request for permission to start. A very good afternoon to everybody who are with us in this program. I'm Charles Miniklaman, and I will be your moderator. On behalf of the organizing committee, I am pleased to welcome those who are present, as well as those who will be joining a bit later. Thank you for being here with us. We really appreciate it your presence. Ladies and gentlemen, to have a blessed program, I would like to invite Al Fadil Ustaz Muhammad Ghazali bin Zakaria to recite and offer a prayer. Please welcome. Assalamu alaikum. Rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Muala Sayyidina Muhammad Muala Alihi wa Ashabihi Ajma'in. Allahumma ya karimu ya wadud. Sesungguhnya kami berkumpul pada hari ini bagi menyatakan kesyukuran di atas kurniaanmu yang tidak ternilai. Jadikanlah kami hamba-hambamu yang sentiasa bersyukur sama ada ni'mat yang sedikit lebih-lebih lagi ni'mat yang melimpah ruah kepada kami. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim Engkau berkatilah dan rahmatilah perjalanan program pada hari ini Sesungguhnya engkau maha mengetahui bahawa kami di sini ingin menimba ilmumu yang sangat luas Bagi mengembangkan ilmu pengetahuan kami sebagai hambamu yang engkau redai Justeru, berkati dan rahmatilah perhimpunan kami ini Kuniakanlah kepada kami ilmumu Sinarilah hati-hati kami dengan cahaya Hayat dan hidayahmu. Semoga dengannya kami mudah menerima dan menghayati serta mengamalkan. Kurniakah jua kepada kami kesihatan anggota, kecergasan minda, ketenangan jiwa, kekuatan semangat. Semoga dengannya kami mampu mendepani cabaran, berdaya saing dan mampu mengangkat martabat diri, keluarga, masyarakat dan negara. Allahumma ja'al jam'ana hadha jam'an mubarakan marhumah. Kutafarruqana min ba'dihi tafarruqan mubarakan ma'asumah. ولا تجعل اللهم فينا ولا معنا شقيا ولا محروما ربنا عليك توكلنا وإليك أنبنا وإليك المصير اللهم طويل أعمارنا وصحح أجسادنا وثبت إيماننا ووسع أرزاقنا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم Thank you so much to Al-Fadil Ustaz Muhammad Ghazali bin Zakaria for the offered prayer. Ladies and gentlemen, we proceed our program in this wonderful afternoon will be the welcoming speech 
of Kota Belu District Education Officer. Thus, with great pleasure and honor, I would like to welcome Mr. Muhammad Fazli Abdul Rosan to deliver his speech and subsequently officiate this program. Please. Okay, uh, seems like uh, due to tech matters, yeah, uh, something to do with connection. I believe uh, our PTPD is trying to uh, tackle that problem. I believe he will be in soon. This is what happened, um, ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to online program. Sometimes uh, we'll be having technical issues. Uh, it's it's just normal for us. Yeah. So please bear with us at the moment. Uh, okay. So. I think uh, the technical technical issues is uh, being solved by now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, once again, I would like to welcome uh, our PPD, Mr. Muhammad Fazli Abdul Rozan, to deliver his speech and subsequently officiate this program. Please welcome. Okay, this is something that is happening uh, for me all the time when it comes to uh, PDPR, when it comes to online. Yeah, and uh, not only to teachers, I believe we've been encountering this. I think this is a good, I mean, uh, uh, I'm not saying this is fortunate. Yeah, but this is the reality of what we are having at the moment. Uh, this is the current situation and this is the current problem current issues uh that is happening for everybody yeah okay uh i got uh, a message here that uh uh, uh, our PPD is having uh, technical issues, uh, a bit challenging. Um, he'll be with us um, throughout um, the, the end of this program then. All right? Okay. Uh, moving on. Um, I would like to take a few seconds for a little yet essential announcement. As a part of the organizing committee's efforts to provide you with timely topic and interesting speaker, ESA is given to all attendees. Thus, we would appreciate it if you fill in the attendance link 
uh, as well as the simple evaluation questions. You could either click the link given in the live chat or scan the given QR code. Ladies and gentlemen, we have now come to the peak of this program. But before welcoming our special guest speaker this afternoon, it's a pleasure for me to introduce and relate some of his biographical details. Dr. Muhammad Sehajwan Ide is an English teacher, a local Kota Beluda, who's kind of currently teaching in Kanding College, Sabah. That means to students from Kota Belud who do not know him yet, he is, with permission, Orang Kita, Jomoti, Tulundati. He has uh, been uh, recognized for his various projects in English language teaching. He, along with his colleagues, won the 2021 Simon Greenall Award with a £1,500 cash prize. In 2020, he also won the Y Silly Seed for the Future, winning USD 11,090 in cash prize. His research on visual literacy earned him the ISTE Literacy Innovation Award in 2019, and he received a cash prize of Australian dollar 10,000 for winning the 2018 Simeo Australia Education Link Award through his Ethnic Tales project. As the head of research and innovation at his school, he has mentored and assisted his colleagues and students to present their works at conferences, innovation contests, and hackathons in both in-person and virtual platforms. In the effort to promote highly immersive program, HIP, through integrated arts, he has been training his students to creative and critical writing, performing in cultural festivals, and publishing their works in literary magazines. Last but not least, he was the 2017 National Teacher Icon. With that, ladies and gentlemen, it is now with great pleasure and honor, I would like to welcome our special guest speaker, Dr. Muhammad Sihajwan Idik, to deliver his talk on English Opens the World for You. Please, welcome. Uh, hi, everybody. So I'm Sihajan Ilik. Um, I'm uh, I'm an English language teacher. I'm currently teaching in Keningau, and I'm from Kota Belut. Yes, uh, I am from Tangusi. Uh, so I, I was born there and I grew up there. Uh, and yes, I'm Bajau. I can speak Bajau well, very well. Ling sama penaku we poyo ta Tangusi. Yang ko maku ata kampung lebuan. Aku uh, school meta pendasan, berbagai aku put uh, SMK Tun Sait, berbagai aku bela uh, belajar meta UITM Shah Alam. And I'm now currently teaching uh, in, in Keningau, uh, at Keningau Vocational College. So my topic is English opens the world for you. Uh, because, well, you know, it, and it's true. Uh, English is it's a it's a tool. It's a powerful tool. It's a weapon. You know, learn it, master it, and most importantly, use it. Once you are able to, you know, like master it and use it, or maybe just to be brave enough to use it, you will be able to go anywhere in any part of the world. You'll be able to do pretty much anything, and that's what I'm going to talk about today. Um. I just, I'm just like asking permission from the moderator. Uh, can I share my own screen? Because I, I, when I look at it, it seems like my screen is being shared uh, automatically. Can I, can I share the screen instead? It's, it's easier. Oh yeah, me. sure. Yeah, sure, doctor. Okay, yeah. okay. Please. So I, I think I can share my screen from here. Okay, I'll just share the screen now. Okay, but thank you so much for, for, for that. Okay, let me see first. Okay, and then, oh, no. Okay, that's sharing screen. Can you guys see this? Okay, I'm sorry, I'm just like, I just need to check whether it's okay. Um, the YouTube, it's a bit, it's a bit delay in YouTube. Okay, you guys can see it right now, right? 
k deepest then height and then we have this thing okay laser pointer let's give that a try so english opens the world for you from sihachuan eating so here i am i'm not showing off or i'm i'm not bragging but what i'm showing to you is my achievement individual achievement since 2015. so i was, I was happy i was lucky enough that i was able to go to places uh, and i had received lots of recognition uh, from from many countries from from many organizations you know i was i went to the uk twice because i won two awards uh, from from the uk and then i went to dubai a few times including being a finalist with global teacher prize um i went to paris and i won first place and then I won a couple of awards from, from the US, from, from, from Australia. I'm going to talk about them briefly. So like what I said, I'm not showing up, but I'm just telling you, the students out there, of what you can be and what you can achieve. You can achieve so much more when you grow up. And English helps you to do that. Because, you know, I was born in Kotebalut. I speak Bajau and I didn't know Malay language. I didn't know English language. I only learned English language and Malay language when I went to primary school and uh, kindergarten and Malay language was easy but English language was difficult but it's a process it's a long process uh, and you enjoy it you can you could feel the excitement as you learn about it but most important thing is that as a teacher as an individual is our impact on others so you see when you master English language when you are able to use the English language you are not just able to use it for yourself but you are able to use it to help others. And I believe that's what English language teachers and English language educators in Malaysia have been doing. You know, they are trying so hard to help your students. So you can see here before the pandemic, if you guys still remember before the pandemic, that was before 2020, uh, all the way until early 2020, you know, I like to take my students to, to many places around the world. You know, we went to Japan, Australia, South Korea and some of the Southeast Asian countries. So you see, uh, I'm teaching at Keningau Vocational College. It, it's in Keningau, it's considered as an interior region, it's a rural area. Um, and you know, in Sabah, usually Sabah students, they don't really have many opportunities as well as the teachers in Sabah. So I'm like trying to prove that, you know, you don't let that prevent you or be, become barriers of, of how far you can go. Okay, so we went to all these places. Now, of course, we although when you look at all these countries, there's only like two, Singapore and Australia, where people actually speak English language. But the thing is, when you speak English language, you are able to go to many countries, even if they don't speak English language. And in, even in a country like Indonesia, we still speak English language because Bahasa Indonesia is very difficult for us to understand and for them to understand our language. So in the end of the day, you still have to speak English. Uh, English language. And yes, a country like Brunei, uh, they speak Malay very well, but when you go for an international event in Malaysia or outside Malaysia, you still need to speak English because there are lots of people from other countries who will be there and they won't be able to understand you if you speak Malay. So that was before the pandemic, but what happened after the pandemic? Now, when the pandemic happened, obviously we moved to virtual events. You know, any online conference, online competitions, as you can see here, these are my students. You know, what I love to do is that, is that I always put my students and my teachers uh, on newspapers for publicity. That's very important. So these are my students. They are just in Kuningo, but they, are able, they were able to take part in many competitions. They were able to present the projects at many conferences all over the world virtually. In fact, with, with virtual events, we don't have to worry about traveling, we don't have to worry about money, we don't have to worry about uh, all the, the things that you have to be concerned about when you travel. You know, it's so easy, it's so cheap, you can do it from anywhere uh, and, and, and any time. And it's very flexible too, so it's pretty cool. Okay, um, and I, yeah, previously I've shown you uh, some of my individual achievements and these are my team achievements. Sometimes, you know, uh, people say, um, if you want to go far, uh, I mean, if you, if you want to go fast, uh, go alone, because uh, you will go very fast. But if you want to go far, uh, we go together. So I'm, I'm like working with my, some, some of the teachers in my school. And with this, with English language, I'm able to just explore beyond 
English language activities as well as vocational activities. Since I'm teaching at a vocational school, uh, when you look at uh, the, the light poster, that's me and then the other two teachers, Mr. Khalifa and Mr. Ibrahim. So we want grant and we want money. It's about 40, 45,000 ringgit for STEM activities. Now STEM, science, technology, engineering, math, that includes robotics. Um, and you know, I'm an English language teacher, but we were able, and all three, in fact, all three of us were English language teachers and we were able to do something that, that was beyond our major, which is English language. You know, it stems, why? Because English language helps you to explore new discipline, new areas beyond your, I would say, your comfort zone or your initial field of interest. And on the right side, uh, I think for those who are in Kotebulut or for those who speak Bajau, they know very well what Dao Dao means. So me and the other teacher, Nurazila Otman, who is also a Bajau, and both of us speak very, uh, Bajau very well. And we're like, let's come up with this project, with art project. And you know, it's, it's dancing, it's storytelling, and our team is the ethnic tells. And since we are about Bajau, we're going to focus on Bajau tells. We're going to put some Bajau language in that English language project that we do. Uh, so, and we need to come up with a name with that. So we decided to come up with Dao Dao because Dao Dao, Dao, Dao it means a long time ago in, in, in English language. And I know in, 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 in my community, in our community, in Kotoblit, when people say, you know, when people want to tell a story, they'll start with that place, you know, Dao Dao, um, Amunjomo Dao Dao. So something like that, you know, Dao Dao is a very powerful place that, you know, in, in Western Salital, we use that to tell English uh, story, uh, English stories, you know, long a long time ago, or uh, once upon a time, but in Bajau language is Dao Dao. So we went with that name and then we pitched our project and then we won, we became the winner of 2021 Simon Greener Award, which is based in the UK, and we explore art. So I'm an English language teacher, but then actually both of us, me and Nurazila, are English language teachers. So as you can see, English language really helps us to do so many things. Okay, so a little bit about me. Like what I said before, I was born in Kota Uh My parents were from Kampung Labuan. That's like, you know, Kampung Labuan is like the true blue, it's a place for the true, true blue bajau, like the, the purest of the purest bajau in Kota Blut. They come from Kampung Labuan. And, and it's a wonderful village for those who live here, who come from, uh, who come from that village. You guys are, you guys are lucky. You guys are very lucky. Uh, Kampung Labuan. Uh, but my parents moved to Kampung Tangusi, so I grew up in Kampung Tangusi with my sister, uh, Nohana Idek, who is a part of the organizing team uh, and also a teacher uh, at, at, at the school, at the hosting school. And um, yeah, I speak Bajo is my mother tongue, Bajo Sama, Yen uh, Abono, Bonko Mangan, Mangan Mangan, Kurung Kurung Jokiti, you know, all those kind of place, Pesorong come. So I'm like telling the audience, the song come, you know, just keep watching this, keep watching this, this talk that we have now. And I was terrible in English. People say, oh, Sir Hajan, you are lucky. You must be speaking English at home. You know, I know your sister is an English language teacher and I know your mom is an English language teacher, but we have this rule. My mom, and you can ask my sister, Nohana Itek, she's here. My mom has this number one rule. When we are at home, we can only speak one language and that language is Bajau language because my mom said you can learn Malay language you can learn English language or any other languages when you go to schools and when you go to any parts of the world but you can only learn Bajau language if you speak it at home so, and that's what we did um, and I speak and I be, I've been speaking Bajau since then when I'm in when I'm back in Kota because you know why would I be speaking English or Malay but the point is although I'm fluent Although I'm very fluent in Bajau language and I didn't really have that exposure to English language uh, when I was growing up or even in my own community, but I was able to master English language. You know, it's not an obstacle. In fact, I think being able to speak Bajau language, and I think this applies to all of, all of us. If you are able to speak your native tongue, it doesn't prevent you from being able to master other languages, including English language. In fact, it will help you to preserve your language. I mean, look what I am doing. So with English language, I'm going to all over the places. I'm writing stories about Bajo language. I'm helping to preserve my, my uh, cultural heritage and my cultural identity and my culture and my language. So it's not, it's definitely not a barrier because some people might perceive that. Um, oh yeah, and my English was horrible. I think you can ask my teachers 
and even my sister about it. Uh, but when I was in school, I like debate. You know what? I I am horrible in English language. But what I'm going to do, I'll just do debate because I like debate. It's so cool. You are like arguing with each other, and you are like doing all this. Uh, you know, you are arguing about facts. You are thinking. You are writing. You are researching. Like English debate is just cool. And I just I just took I took part in English debate. Uh, every year although my english was horrible and i think you know people back then were not really able to understand what i was saying uh, uh but yeah i really like it and i think it helped me to improve my language my thinking skills and my speaking skills uh, and in 2004 i took my spm in smk a toon site um and then i went to ipg gaia so my sister went to ipg gaia too so i took tessel so tessel is like teaching english for second language that's for english teachers in 2005 and i graduated in 2011. okay so when i was uh, at ipg gaia my english was still like bad like when i spoke english to my classmates i think my my lecturers were just will just laugh at me and i think few of my classmates will not even be able to understand what i was saying but the, the thing is is that you had the things that i think i had that like determination and motivation to improve my english language and uh, to keep speaking it because one day you will get better you will continue to get better and i'm not saying um my english is like the best right now i'm i'm still making mistakes in speaking english language and i'm still making mistakes in even in Bajo and Malay language. But the thing is, it's a it's the process of learning. Okay? Because even native speakers of English language, they, they still make mistakes uh, in speaking the language. Okay, so I hope this motivates you guys. So what I'm going to do today is that I'm going to show you there are so many things that you can do with English language, uh, especially for the school students and also for the teachers, for, you, for, for teachers to be able to get some ideas of what activities you can do with your students. And, and I know that we are under lockdown. Like how are we going to do all of these activities that like we are under lockdown? Schools are closed. The students are at home. The teachers are at home. But you know what? Most of these activities that we did and we are doing uh, the students are doing it at home and i'm just at home in Keningau, like i don't go anywhere but we are still able to do all of these things you know the virtual events and all these uh internet based uh activities that we do they really help so you can see you can do this to innovation uh you present your work at conference innovation contest you can take part in entrepreneurship uh, programs sorry yeah research conferences, innovation and entrepreneurship. And you can do art. You can go for art carnivals. There are lots of online art carnivals. There are literally festivals, festivals that focus on literary works. You can even write and get published. Uh, you can even do some paintings and virtually exhibit your works at art galleries. Uh, you can go, you can definitely go for international education. There are lots of courses, um, international online training programs you know, uh, conducted in English language by other countries or even by in Malaysia, you can definitely take part of it. And I put it here, you, know, you can go for grant application, exhibition, hackathon, and so many other things. Now I'll not be able to talk about them specifically today, uh, but I'll just show them briefly, just to motivate you guys and to get, to get you know, inspiration. So yeah, I'm an English language teacher, and I think any English language teachers can vouch this, that you know, if you are teaching English language, these are the activities that you do. And these are the activities that you, the students typically take part when you are at school. Uh, debate, public speaking, spelling bee, drama, call speaking, poetry reading, or poetry slam. So when you are at school, if you have these kind of activities, I suggest you definitely should take part in it, okay? And if not, you can, uh, if for the students, you can suggest them to your teachers. And now uh, teachers, can we do like public speaking or can you teach us public speaking? Or maybe can we do online public speaking uh, because, you know, uh, schools are closed nowadays. And I know some of them might be difficult. I know debate can be very difficult to be, uh, to be done online, but there are lots of activities, many activities. They, some of them are organized by our Ministry of Education or it's under Ministry of Education like JPN and PPD, but some of them are being organized independently and you should check this out. Okay. And um, now I'm teaching at a vocational college. And what we like to do is that, you know, at vocational college, students, they have to come up with a project by the end of their 
studies. And that means by the end of their studies, they are already 19 years old. So they have to come up with a project. So let's say if they are automotive students, that means they learn about cars. What they do is that they need to come up with a project that is related to cars. If they are learning about cooking, they have to come up with something that is related to cooking. So, and I saw potential in that. You know what? There are lots of online conferences out there. They are, some of them are free of charge. Some of them, you need to pay for them, but they are very cheap because, well, they are virtual activities. So let's get our students to present their works. Now, and some of our students have been presenting their works and some of them are going to present their work in the next few weeks in, in, uh, at conferences in Africa, in Europe, and I put it here, Asia, Oceania, and even in Malaysia. So as you can see here, my students, that's my students, that's my, stu uh, my fellow teacher, that's uh, another teacher from my school. And when you look at this one, that's me. So that's my student and that's another student of mine. So they are presenting their work live, not a pre-recorded video. Uh, uh, and that's their slideshow that they have developed. Um, and we did this on Zoom because, the, the, well, that's the platform that the organizer used. And the, there were audience, participants, listeners from other countries. So you might think, well, you know, these students are lucky. They must be very good in English. That's why they are able to do it. Uh, well, I wish, I think everybody wish, I think they wish. But in reality, they were not. But with proper practice and uh, guide and mentoring from teachers, and a lot of work, they put a lot of work in doing the slides, in preparing the scripts, so they were able to do it. And of course, it takes guts. Like you just have to be brave enough to do it. You know, you just have to push yourself. It might be nerve wracking when you are doing it for the first time, but it will get better. Okay, and I've shown you the online uh, event. So before the pandemic, this was the, this was the physical event. Uh, that's my student. This uh, is my. Stu this was my student, Faisal. I'm sorry, um, Faisal. Uh, this uh, was my student, Faisal. He's actually from Tuaran. He's Bajau, and he was in Australia. And he's presenting his project to some uh, at an innovation contest to some international uh, delegates. And this was my, these were my students. Uh, they were presenting their project from uh, in Japan, okay? Uh, and they were, well, they were from Kaningao. I think Grace was from Kaningao. This lady, she's from Kaningao. And that lady, she's from, uh, she's from Kota Kinabalu. So th these were the things that we did before the, before the pandemic. So you guys can do both, right? You can do the physical events. Once this pandemic is over, you, we might be able to do this again. Uh, you know, it might be so hard to travel. So let's just go with, virtual events, online events like this. So, you know, definitely both platforms are excellent. Okay, I'm showing you this because I know a lot of you might like writing and I know that writing is one of the things that we need to learn at school and it's something that te teachers teach. Okay. Um, so let's see. So these were my students. That's Cherry, Cherry Adra from Tawau. And that's Fredo Fu. He's from Kota Kinabalu. So they, their works, so Cherry, she wrote a poem and Fredo wrote a short story. And they got published in Buki Market Magazine, which is a magazine based in, in the UK. And they actually got invited to attend the launching event, which was in which was in the, in the UK through Zoom. And this was my student's well. So she's Bisaya, right? Like in Kotablet, I'm sorry, in Sabah, one of the ethnic groups that we had was Bisaya. So this student, she's Bisaya. So I was like, you know, could, could you just write short story related to your culture? And she wrote a short story about Dang In Sum. And I think you guys know, uh, you might not know, but Dang In Sum, she's like the John of Ark uh, in Sabah. Uh, so she wrote a short story about it and she got published too in Writers Act magazine, also in the UK. Now, some of my students, they wrote papers that were more academic and they got published in journals. Uh, it's when they do, it's when they do, uh, 
you know, uh, they do their research project or innovation project. So you definitely can do this. You can write. And I think writing is a good activity during this lockdown. You know, you, you spend too much time facing the screen. I was like, I'm putting this screen aside. I just want to sit somewhere at my home, like looking at the scenery and just write something like a poem and short story. And what you can do with them, like what am I going to do with this thing? Or you can get them published. And when you can get them, when you get them published, they will be very good for your for yourself, for your learning, for your resume, for your well adventure, like just life adventure. So what can you do? You write something. If you are into art, you can write short stories or poems or songs, like what I have shown you. You can also perform. So these are my students. They were performing readers' theater. They were performing sign language poetry. Now, this is readers' theater. So it's like a theater, uh, but it's a readers' theater. That means you need to read the theater. And they, they perform theater. Uh, it's called Numani. I think Numani is like a, in, in the budget community, it's the spirit of the right. Okay? It's a national HIP content. And they won first place. So these were my students. These were my students. They... They were not able to speak like us. They communicate in sign language, okay? They communicate in sign language. They, they just use hands and expression. So they might not be able to do poetry verbally, like the way we do, but what they can do is that they can use sign language to perform poetry. So this was them. And obviously, we did this before the pandemic, but we took part in the competition when, I'm sorry, we did this before the, the current lockdown. Uh, and we took part in this event during the lockdown. Uh, and then th this was last year. So these were two of my students, Jacob and Isaac. So they are special needs students and they did animated tales and they performed them in a literary festival in Blue Night. So yeah, you can write, you can perform and you can do them at home. You can do them during this lockdown. So yeah, like what I've shown you before, I came from Cote Balut, so this was a picture that I took from Cote Balut. And you know, Cote Balut, it's a bit isolated. It's not really isolated, it's a coastal uh, town. Uh, I guess you can say it's a bit far from the city, uh, the, the people receive less exposure. So this, this was where I grew up, and this is where I'm currently working in. I'm working in Keningau, and Keningau is much further from Kota Kinabalu. It's surrounded by mountains. People will think twice or three times to come to Keningau. But as you can see, it didn't stop me, or it didn't stop me helping my students or my fellow teachers, and it definitely didn't stop my students from exploring, conquering the world, you know, physically or even through virtual platform. In fact, we can do many things through virtual platform. So uh, so this was a little bit history about me uh, winning some international competition. So in 2016, that was like five years ago, I won Macmillan Teacher at my heart. And I was like, I didn't expect myself to win. So it was announced on 14 February 2016. And what did I get? I was able to go to the UK for two weeks and it's fully funded trip. Everything was paid for me. My, my flight was paid by the sponsor, my accommodation was paid, my cost was paid, uh, and they gave me allowance when I was there. And the thing about it, I always wanted to go to UK, but I never had the chance to do so. And, and I won this in 2016, and I was surprised I got exactly what I wanted. So it was my first, I would say one of the first international achievements, my first international win. And when I won this, I was like, you know what? If I can do it once, I can do it again and again and again and again. And true enough, I was able to do it again uh, a few times. So in 2017, there's this Global Teacher Plus. And I was like, I was nobody during that time. And global, being a finalist for Global Teacher Plus, like you had to be somebody, at least in Malaysia. I was like, you know what? I'm going for this. I'm applying for this. And I got it. I was the only Malaysian as a 50 finalist. Uh, in, uh, in at Global Teacher Prize in 2017. Now I didn't win, but I was I was able to go to Dubai for two for a week, and it was a fully funded trip to attend the ceremony. So Dubai was a pretty city. So as you can see here, you know it says there the Anak Bajau. So 
you know, a little bit uh, pride for 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 the Bajo and for the other ethnic tribe. You know, for you to be able, for you to make your parents proud, your family proud, your community proud, your you ethnic group, uh, group uh, proud, and you will be able to inspire so many other people too. Uh, and and what about this? So in 2017, I went to Paris. You see, when I went to Paris, uh, I was at this competition and I was the only Asian. As you can see, the rest of them, they were white. So, and they were, there were nine finalists. The rest of them, they were from UK, two persons from UK, one person from the US, one person from the Russia, one person from the Germany, one person from Canada, and then one person from Denmark and two persons from Colombia. So most of them, if not all, they were white, they were Westerners, and I was the only Asian. But I went for it and I was like, you know what? Being the only Asian here, it wasn't a barrier. It wasn't an obstacle. It was my motivation to win. When I found out that I was the only Asian and I was the only non-white in the competition, I was like, you know what? This is my moment. I could win this and show people that Asians are just as good, especially from Malaysia, especially from Sabah, or I could lose it and I will help to perpetuate the stereotypes. You know, you know, he's Asian. Asians will never be that good. So I decided to go for the other option. You know, I need to win this. I needed to win this to prove that Asians were just as good. And I won. So I was very grateful. I won first place from Malaysia. So second place went to Russia, Dimitri. And third, third place was given to Sidney and David. So they're from, they were from US and UK. So there were two of them in the third place. Um, so when I was in Paris, uh, it was on 20, it was from uh, 21st to 22nd September 2017. So this was the first day. Uh, there were nine finalists. So I was presenting my project. And from the nine finalists, they said, uh, we are going to, from the nine finalists, we are going to narrow it down to three finalists, three top three, and three top three will be presenting on the next day. So after on the next day, on the second day, uh, the judge approached me and they said, hey, you are still Hajuan, right? It's like, yeah, I'm still Hajuan. Uh, just get ready for your presentation today. And I was so happy because when he told me that I'm going to present again on that day, I was like, you know what? I am the top three. And being in the top three, that's good enough. That, that's a remarkable achievement. But what happened when they officially announced it was that there were not three Finalists, there were four finalists, four. There were four finalists there were, and there were three spots, number one, number two, and number three. And I was like, you know what? If I don't do well, I might get, I might get fourth place. And I don't want to be in, in the fourth place because I really thought that I was in the top three. So I gave it all in the first day and I had technical issue. I was the first person to go and I had technical issue because none of the microphones were working and we had four minutes, just four minutes to present everything and my microphone were not working. So I just had to speak as loud as I could because the time was ticking. But the microphones were working very well for the next three contestants from, from Russia, UK, and the US. But you know, I didn't, let it to, I didn't let it stop me. And when they announced the result, I was so happy because I won. So here, I won first place. So you can see here, that's me. And that, those were the three judges. And that was me with the judges and with the other nine the other finalists from other eight countries so you see there's nothing impossible and uh in 2018 i went i went to italy and and i went for a competition and we got second place so I'm, i'll just talk about this briefly I'm, I'm not going to talk uh, about it for a very long time um and in 2018 I became the first Malaysian to win the Senior Australia Education Link Award. So I was the first Malaysian and so far the only Malaysian to win it. And I got 10,000 Australian dollars. Now, 10,000 Australian dollars, how much is that in Malaysian ringgit? That's about almost 30,000 ringgit Malaysia. Uh, so the results were announced on 25th October uh, 2018. And I didn't know. I was just looking at the website and I'm like, I was like refreshing and refreshing the website. And when it was slowly refreshing and I could see my name there, winner. Muhammad Sihajuan Binidek, and I was like, I was, I was very happy. I couldn't believe it. I remember on that particular day because we didn't have any notification before the announcement whether we won or not. We just had to check on the website, and I call it a comeback win. Why 
why did I call it a comeback win? Because in 2015, I was the top five finalist in 2015 but i didn't win i was the top five finalist and i tried again and again and in 2018 i finally won it so this is another thing that you can you know tell yourself and you know, sometimes you do you don't make it when you are doing it for the first time but it doesn't mean that you have to stop you can just like keep doing it now i was the top five finalist in 2015 so in 2016 and 2007, I tried again. But what happened in 2016 and 2007, I wasn't even a finalist at all. I didn't even make it as a finalist, but I didn't stop. I went for it again in 2018 with a different idea, different project. And in 2018, I won. So, you know, things, a lot of things can happen, but don't ever, ever, you know, give up. Like just, you might want to take a break and focus on something else first and then get back to it, but you don't give back on, on you know you don't give up on your dream uh and in 2018 i won another scholarship i won yatafa scholarship so for the english language teachers you can definitely go for uh, uh this yatafa scholarship so in that year 2018 they introduced a new scholarship and they call it express publishing scholarship and i was the first person to win it and what did i get i went to the uk to present my project uh, at Yatafel conference in the UK in 2018. So this was me presenting my work in the UK. Uh, and this was me next to my idol. When I was there, I was given a mentor. They said, hey, Sri Harjuan, you're going to get a mentor for your conference. I was like, so who's going to be my mentor? And they said, Scott Thornbury. I was surprised. Now for English language teachers, you might know who Scott Thornbury is. Scott Thornbury, uh, when I was at UITM, I studied his book. I read his books. I use his answers uh, in my exam papers i use his theories in my thesis in my research and when i was there they appointed him to be my mentor and he went to and when he was there he watched my presentation and he said you know like he said he completed complimented me in in, in many ways so i was like so excited it's something that i couldn't believe like a person that you just studied you studied a person's book and then you were like thinking this person was amazing and then one day you were able to actually meet that person talk to that person and that person became your mentor and that person even watched your presentation from the beginning till the end so that was amazing uh in 2019 i became the first malaysian to win an ESTE award particularly uh iste uh iste literacy innovation award so this was me from the website okay uh and for those for those for those in Sabah, particularly those those in Kota Belut. So I won, I was I took part in a few uh, international storytelling competitions. And in 2009, I won I, I won the GCED storytelling contest with my story gala. I'm not so sure. I think those people in Kota Belut particularly, do you know what gala is? I'm sure you know. You know, that's our childhood story right there. Our parents Ours warn us don't get too close in the water or you know stay guarded when you are in the water because gala might get you and uh in 2016 uh, i was a finalist on commonwealth story writing competition uh, with my story black black for those who speak bajo who are listening to this presentation can you tell me what black black is you know if you guys can't tell me what it means in bajo language you have failed as a bajau okay because you should know what it means black black it means scarecrow but it came from the word black which means eagle or maybe hawk okay and there's a story behind it so and i thought about it okay uh wisely said for the future 2020 so yeah we are was with the other two teachers and these two teachers what subject do they teach mr khalifa and mr ibrahim they were they were they are english language teachers too and the thing about this all three of us that's me that's mr khalifa and that's mr ibrahim they are we are best friends so you know sometimes you can win a competition all by yourself or you can win them with your best friends so that's pretty cool your best friends as your team so i know because i know you guys always have your best friends whatever you do whether school student or teachers like oh i have to be with my best friends i can't do it with other people okay fine you can be with your best friends and you can still do amazing things with your best friends other than gossiping okay so this wisely seat for the future we it's a it's a competition based in the us 
uh, and uh, we can you can apply for grant and we applied for it and then we won USD 11,000 so that's about 45,000 so these were the things that we did at our school we had drones we had 3d printing uh, we trained students and teachers in this and then we took part in activities like you know RC cars so these were these are emerging technologies or maybe they are still em emerging technologies for now so we had this idea of doing this right okay uh, 2021 so that's this year Simon Greenell Award so me and Miss Madam Nurazila we won this com competition so both of, I, both of us we spoke Bajau uh, so because both of us both of us are Bajau like I'm Bajau from Kota Belut Nurazila she's an English we are both English language teachers uh, she's from uh, she's a Bajau Putatan I think so although we are English language teachers but we speak Bajau to each other because that's a must. When a when a bajo meets another bajo, it's in, we just speak bajo, okay? And the first thing that you people ask is that can you speak bajo? Padeling sama kau. So if the person say yes, I can speak bajo, and we immediately speak in bajo. But then when you meet another bajo, and the person was like, you know what? I'm bajo. I can understand a bit, but I can't really speak bajo. Like okay, uh, that's a bit. It's going to be a bit awkward. Okay, uh, so we won this award, Simon Greenell Award. So we won an amount of money. So with our project title Dao Dao, which means a long time ago, uh, and then we focused on these uh, activities, right? Readers theater, uh, sign language poetry, animated cells, all sort of arts. So if you can see all this, this thing, this guy, he's watching, this is Black Black. So this is what we call Black Black. And this was the, an animated tell about Black Black. Black. And it says that because only he could keep the clothes away from the parai. It says parai there. So that's the word that we use. So that's our strategy in inserting native language, in this case, Bajo language, in English language. Now we put parai there, and we're like explaining what parai is. Parai means paddy. Or, uh, you know, there are some words that are more complicated. So people learn to explain the, the nat native words, the indigenous words in English language. So this was my journey from 2012 to 2016. I focused on English language. I'm like doing public speaking and debate. And in 2015 to 2000, from to now, I was appointed as the head of research and innovation. And I'm like, you know, let's evolve because the thing about English language, once you master it, once you learn it, once once you learn it, you, you master it, you use it, you can use it to conquer and dominate anything in Malaysia or all over the world. So I'm like, you know what? let's go when I, in 2015 i was like i'm 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 happy with english language activities but let's let's go beyond it let's go for innovation competitions let's go for research conference let's go for entrepreneurship program and let's because we can speak english we have the weapon to break the barriers and pave the way so more people can do it and in 2020 i'm like i've been doing research and innovation I've been doing vocational education. I've been doing STEM. Uh, I want to explore arts. So in 2020, from last year until now, I'm like, let's go, let's do writing, let's perform, let's do painting, let's dance, let's write short stories, and let's perform poetry, let's do puppet show, and all these sort of things. And we have all this, we can publish them, we can perform at festivals, online festivals, lots of online festivals, and online exhibitions too. So I started with English language activities. So this was us uh, winning debate Keningau level in 2004. So these were my students debate and these were my students doing poetry at an international event in Kuala Lumpur. Okay, so any English language activities, they know, they know, uh, these are the things that you do. Okay, so it's a common thing to train. If you're an English language teacher, you train your students in debate public speaking, whether you like it or not. It's pretty much not an option, but I enjoy them though. Uh, okay, <clears throat> and in 2015, I decided to go for innovation contest. So, uh, and uh, these were my students. It was the very first time that I actually decided to take my students not for English debate or public speaking, but but for an innovation contest. That was in 2015, and by 2016, we went for more innovation contests. Innovation contest, it's like this, and also entrepreneurship contest. So this was, uh, Syndex was an innovation contest, Pitch Borneo was an entrepreneurship contest. So in 2016, I, we decided to push further, 
and in 2017 we won a few competition this was my this were my students and and our teachers that won first place in in a state level innovation contest and this was my students they also won first place in a, another state level innovation contest there was in 2007 so by 2018 we're like you know what we have been taking part in uh innovation contests in in malaysia so what about let's let's try to go abroad let's go overseas let's try to take part in events outside malaysia and in 2018 this was us excuse me so this was us our very first international our very first international event outside malaysia so we went to south korea okay so this was there was me and there were few other students and teachers okay and in 2018 too i decided to i this were this were my students that's stephanie uh, and that's honey uh, i decided to you know what school students people usually said that only professionals university students or lecturers present work at conferences but i want my school students to present at conferences let's let's set a trend let's break the barrier let's show that school students can present at conferences just like people in tertiary education or in universities and in 2019 we pushed the hardest we could we went to japan as you can see we went to australia and this was us in brunei so you know and then we went to many countries in in uh, 2019 like japan south korea taiwan australia thailand singapore brunei singapore. and we were like so excited uh, and in two thousand, but just because we took part in many international in comp in competitions or concerns outside Malaysia, we never abandoned the local ones, especially the ones in Sabah. Because you know, for the Sabahans out there, no, no, uh, the best people to support Sabah is the great Sabahans, right? So these are events in Sabah, and we still take part of them. Uh, we still we still take part in these events. Uh, and in two thousand twenty oh no the pandemic happened so what do we do do we stop do we quit or do we suspend everything no let's you know again with english language when you have that weapon in you you have that power you can explore so many things so let's explore all the opportunities that are virtual and you know what when when the pandemic happened we discovered so many opportunities online that we could take part and we didn't even know about this before as you can see here these were my students making history <laughs> presenting your project on all of these international events and a lot of the time they became the first malaysian to do so okay not second not first not the tank malaysian but the first malaysians to do so okay this was my student she became the first malaysian to speak at a youth stem summit in the uk so this was my students they became the first malaysian team to win hackathon uh, unesco and this was my student who became the first person to win the world the first malaysian student to win a world changer award so and all of this they were virtually done and this was us so as you can see we even came uh, we even took part in in an event as a team so there were too many of us but these were the only students that were able to join us in the uh, in the deep briefing as i called them on on zoom so and then there, and then we discover more opportunities or more opportunities we discover we learn more about grant application uh, starting uh, since 2020 we have started to search for any grant opportunities you know because usually when you go for competitions or conferences you have to pay for them but with grant application you get money and you can carry out your project and then we decided to try Hackathon. Hackathon is like an innovation competition, but it came in a very, but it's 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 done in a very different format. It usually takes place in days, and we can even do virtual exhibition. You know, I think we are so used to face to face or in person exhibition, but you can actually do virtual exhibition. It's like you exhibit your work, but it's done online, and of course, and I think most of you here, many of you here, are teachers. And I, we never forgot about the teachers. The teachers are the key element in, in educating the students, in pushing the schools, in pushing the students, and even in English language, 
obviously the teachers play a main role. So let's not forget about the teachers. And we never, we never forgot about the teachers because I've been showing you what our students did. And these were what our teachers did. And these were just some of our teachers. Our teachers have done so many more. So as you can see here, what I do, what I like to do, I, what I do with my teachers is exactly what I like to do with the students. I always put them on the news, let them become the star. Because let people see teachers, they are, they should be like, you know, like actors, singers, and athletes. People should admire them because they have been doing this amazing work for generations. But people like to undermine teachers, uh, underestimate teachers. Okay, and we are not meant to be underestimated for the teachers out there. I think you guys know that very well. Uh, so yeah, we did this uh, performance, uh, storytelling in, in, in Brunei. Okay, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, in 2020, I told you guys, we decided to go for, we decided to explore arts. So these were my students. They, they, uh, they became voice actors to our animated tales. Okay, because they were uh, special needs students, so they were not really able to look directly into the camera, but they could become voice actors. And they draw, drew, they did the drawing for the stories, for the animated tales. So they didn't have to, so they didn't have to show their faces. Okay, and in early 2021, early this year, uh, I wanted my students to, I wanted my students to start writing. So these were my students, as you can see, uh, so my student, they were, I, I have students who want what for comics too, and I have a and I have have a student who won an award for songwriting contest, uh, and they are all in English language. Yes, so that's the thing about uh, English language. When when the students are in college to do something that they really like, that they are so close to their heart, that they are so passionate about even if they are not good in English, they will push through. They will be willing to use it. They will be willing to learn it because they are doing something that they like. So these are my students that I discover they like writing and they like to write. They like to uh, talk about their cultures and English allow them to do it. English allow them, English get them that, that connection not just for them to be able to connect with so many international opportunities uh since well i think most of them if not all of them are international competitions or international publication and like what i've said before we did uh we we after after early this year we went with literally arts and i got this idea if if they can write they can perform so we went for performance too uh so what benefit did it get? So my my school has been featured on television. So this was us early this year. We were on TV uh, TV One. Uh, so that was my student Alisha. So that's my student Jane. Uh, that's another student of mine. Uh, so they were on television. I was there too, uh, and a lot of them were featured on television. Uh, and then we were also uh, my school Kaninga Vocational College. We are also featured on Form 5 Malay language textbook. So if you flip through the textbook, you might see my school there. My school there, that's our school principal. That's me uh, in Paris. Uh, that's us in Thailand. And that's us in Indonesia. So with the accomplishment, with the achievement that we have done, we have somehow put the school, uh, put Malaysia in world map and, you know, and a lot of people from, from the entertainment and media industry, people from the Ministry of Education acknowledge our, our achievement, our accomplishments as a school. And this was, you know, this was us. This is us. So you never lose, you either win or learn. When you go for any competition or conference, don't be afraid to lose, okay? Because you actually never lose, you either win or learn, okay? There's always something that you can get whenever you take part in something. So you don't have, you don't want to have this kind of per perception that, oh, I went there, but then you know what? I didn't get anything. It was just a waste of my time. It wasn't a waste of your time. You learn something, and from there you can improve. Because I myself, um, I myself, I have lost so many competitions. I have been to so many events where I got where I was criticized a lot 
where people ridicule me, where people ridicule my students, but we never gave up. We kept learning. We listened to feedback. We try to improve ourselves. I try to improve myself and we move forward. We learn, we, we make progress and we keep trying, we keep doing it and we hope that we can get better. And I believe we have, we have managed to get better. Your slang makes you great. Your limitation makes you greater. Okay. So remember you have slang and you might think, oh, you know what? I'm not good in this. I'm not good in that. I'm not good in so many things. But if you really look at it, your limitation makes you greater because most of the things that help me and my students accomplish things in life, uh, in all of these competitions or in these awards, they come from our limitation. They don't come from our slang. Uh, so in 2018, I told you before, so I won this, uh, I won this uh, award, uh, senior, I won this award, senior Australia education link, uh, in 2018. And I won, uh, Australian dollar, uh, 10, 10,000 Australian dollar, which is like almost 30,000. So these were the stories that I got. So these titles, they were, they are in Bajo language, but they are, the stories are in English. And I think you, for the budget out there, you might know some of them, right? Like Kakudian, what's that? What's what's Kakudian? Uh, what's Manuk Manuk? What's Koko? And all these sort of things. Uh, uh, and then uh, I I use my my family names. You know, Bintek is my mom. Idek is my father. Uh, Anang, that's my sister's nickname. Nohana Idek, she's here. She's one of the organizing team. Uh, and Dude is my other sister. Uh, Nonong is my brother. Uh, these are our names, nicknames, and they are very Bajau, you know, Bajau nicknames. These are like the names that people had. And some of them, are, oh yeah, Kanang, that's my late grandmother. Uh, and and Moon was my late uncle. Um, and Neng was my my late grandmother. So as you can see, the things that you know, when people look at this, I was once ridiculed and laughed at, or maybe you know, people look down at me like, what, what is this? What are you doing? This is like you know, a bit nonsense, a bit ridiculous, a bit childish. But with this, I won so many international awards. The Senior Australia Education League Awards. I became the first Malaysian to win it. But there was the only award I won. Uh, so many other awards related to this project. So as you can see. The things that people ridicule you might be the things that help you achieve a lot more in life. Okay, you just don't know it yet. So for the bajo out there, especially the bajo, you guys might know uh, might know what are these. These are like magical creatures in the bajo community uh, uh, in in Sabah, uh, and I wrote short stories about them. And in fact, we wrote short stories about I wrote short stories about them. Uh, we did readers theater on them. We did animated talks on, on them. So I'm not going to talk about it uh, for a very long time. Uh, yeah, so, you know, in the Bajo community, uh, our ancestors, we used to sing and dance to all sorts of spirits in the past during our, I guess, pagan era. So I understand that we don't really talk, we don't really, you know, do this anymore. Like we don't dance and sing to all these spirits, but this was our cultural heritage. It was, it was who we were and it is still who we are. And I think this applies to other ethnic groups in, in Sabah, whether you are Dusun, Murud, Iranun. So remember that this what this was what our ancestors did. And the least that we can do to continue the legacy of our ancestors uh, was to was to remember what they did, was to immortalize what they did. And Writing stories is a good way to immortalize that. But no, not all of the spirits were the good ones. Some of the spirits were bad. They were bad, bad spirits. You need to stay away from them. So I know that those Bajo, especially in Kota Blood, you guys know this very well. You need to stay away from them, from these creatures. You know, Galap, Kokok, and I learned about this, Simbalon. So they, these were like very, and these are like, creatures with all sort of supernatural abilities but we don't really but we didn't sing to them or dance to them but we stay away from them okay because they were dangerous but it's okay there are always there were always ways on how to deal with these supernatural creatures or magical creatures when you when you encountered them oh, okay because uh, they might not be around now in Kota Bulut. A lot of the supernatural creatures in, in, in our community, I believe they have returned to the fairyland. 
Uh, but yeah, one day we might see them again. You'll never know. So just talking about my student, so this was Habib Malik. When he first entered the school, he's very shy. Uh, I asked him to take part in, solid, uh, in public speaking competition. You know, public speaking competition, there's this uh, part where you have to do impromptu, where you have to do impromptu speech. You, you get a title and you just have to speak instantly about the, 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 the topic uh, in three minutes. So what he did was that he was just, he went to the stage and he only spoke for one, uh, he only spoke one sentence and then he said, thank you. And I was like so embarrassed because he did that. But the thing is, I shouldn't be embarrassed. That was in 2013. But he continued to improve. He continued to ask for my help to, to help him uh, become better. And as a result, he won many public speaking competitions. He, he helped us win many debate competitions. And he won best debater in some of the competitions. So you never know what, what you can do. I mean, you might think that you know what i i did this thing and i was the worst i don't think so i can ever do that again but you know what you'll never know if you keep uh working on improving yourself you might become the best okay you might improve a lot you might go beyond than what you can than what you imagine that what you could imagine before so keep working on it keep putting effort into what you do so this was my student, Eric Young. When he first came to our school, he was very, just like uh, uh, Habib Malik just now, he's very quiet, he's very shy. Uh, but then, and he went for debate, he went for debate and public speaking, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, you know, when we were selecting some students for debate and public speaking, and he was there, but he didn't make it because he wasn't he wasn't that confident in speaking at all. But what I noticed about Eric Young is that I saw his potential in entrepreneurship and innovation contests because he's very smart. He always has these fresh ideas, okay, and he knows how to make things very convincing. And he won many uh, innovation contests and entrepreneurship competitions. So these were some of the competitions that we won that he won. So yeah, again, just like my previous point, don't give up. Keep working on it. So you might try one thing and then you are not good at it. And then you might want to try another thing because you know you you your talent and your passion and your ability might be very uh, effective in different platforms. Because when you are at school, when you are teacher or students, there are so many things that you can do. You might not be good at it, but you just have to find it's not because you are not good, but maybe you are yet to discover what you are good at and which platform that you can actually explore. So I put this as my last the, as my last slide. I call it the beginning. Why did I call it the beginning? When I was uh, when I start, I started teaching in two thousand twelve. So I was uh, assigned to train a debate team. I was assigned to train a debate team uh, in two thousand twelve, and then we lost. Uh, we didn't win and during that time i was so surprised that my student made it to the final but they didn't win because they, one of the speakers made a mistake he was supposed to say i disagree with the topic but he ended up saying i agreed with the topic before he sat down and just like that we lost the whole the, de the final round of the debate in 2012 and in 2013 we practice and practice again because this time around i am not going to make the same mistake that i did in the previous year where i didn't believe in my students i believe in them now they can improve they can do it they can win it and we went for that debate and we won it hands down all of the judges voted for for our team to win. So we were the state level Voctec debate champion in 2013. And when my students won this debate, I was so happy and I felt like I could win anything in this world. With that, uh, I end my slot for now. Uh, yay. So uh, thank you so much for listening. I hope this benefits you guys. I'm going to just stop sharing now. And uh, yeah, I'm going to pass it to the moderator. Oh, before that, I'm so sorry uh, because we were we were having technical mistakes uh, and I forgot to do this. I would like to uh, express my appreciation to Mr. Fadli, Mr. Muhammad Fadli Abdul Rosan, the head of Kota Blut Education Office. Uh, I know him very well. I know him since I was in high school in SMK Tung site from 2000 to 2004. Uh, I would like to express my gratitude to Mr. Jaino Sayer, the school principal of SMK Pekan 2, uh, and to our moderator, Mr. Charles Menik Ramam, uh, and also to the organizing team. Uh, one of them is Jessica. I know Jessica very well. And one of them is my sister. 
uh, Nohana Ide. So basically, this talk was pretty much a family obligation since it was my sister. I I couldn't say no. It's supposed to be, you know, when you're, since it's my sister, I just have to say yes. It's the only one. Or otherwise, my, my mom will get upset. My sister will get upset. And that's not good. Okay, that, with all due respect, I pass this to our moderator today. Okay, thank you so much. Wow. I'm speechless, actually. Thank you so much, Dr. Muhammad Sihajuan Edek, for the wonderful, interesting, and inspiring talk. Thank you. You see, I, 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 yeah. our speaker, yeah. Our speaker has the world open to him and to his students by using the language. The question for us now is, are we ready to have the world open for us? Ladies and gentlemen, moving on with our program, we are now having a short question and answer session with Dr. Muhammad Siachuan Idik. In this session, due to our limited time, we will be having live questions from uh, three students and another two questions from the live chat, which will be chosen by our organizing team. We will start with the first question from Dura Khadija Rajali. Over to you, Dura. Uh, thank you to the moderator. Um, thank you to the organizing team. Uh, I would like to say good afternoon to Dr. Muhammad Sirhajwan Idek, um, the KB District Education Office, teachers, students, and everybody who is watching the stream right now, I am Dora Khadija Binti Rajali, and I am a Form 4 student from SMK Pekandua Kota Blut. So the question I would like to present to you is that um, you are such an inspiration. You have done so many things, so many good things to students that motivate and inspire people to learn English and do their best in learning new things. Um, and surely the program name English Opens the World for You has many interpretations depending on who's reading it. So I would like to ask personally for you, what drives you? What does English Opens the World for You mean? Thank you. Uh, well, it, that's a very good question. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Ms. Dula Khadija. So what does it mean to me? English opens the world for me. Uh, when I was uh, when I was at high school, uh, like what I said before, I wasn't I wasn't good in English language. I was terrible in the English language. And I, and when I spoke English, people couldn't understand me. I think my teachers wouldn't understand me. Uh, I was horrible in pronunciation, and of course in in other parts of English language. Um, but then I knew back then that. You know, when you were like you were a student at school, you got ridiculed, you got bullied, uh, people made fun of you, and like I was the type of student that other students made fun of, that other students ridiculed. But I knew, so it it drove me like just to really push myself so that I can accomplish something. Maybe not during that time, not during my high school, but I knew that that particular. Uh, Thing that I need to accomplish something when I finish school, when I when I won, went beyond beyond that that you know bubble that I was at, and I knew back then that English language was that tool or was one of the tools that I needed to learn, master, and use. Because you know, since I was a kid, I like watching television, um, TV shows, movies. They are all in English, and I've I've seen what people. You know, although I've not been, I've not traveled anywhere, but I've seen what what other places look like, what what they did, uh, and I, I felt like English language was one of the tools. So that awareness, that you know, particular subject matter, in this case English language, was very important to you. It really uh, helped me to, you know, it really gave me that motivation to just keep improving my English. Because I knew that one day, if I kept working on my English, no matter how many people laugh at me or ridicule at me or laugh at my writing or my speaking, 
uh, one day I will be able to improve because at the end of the day, it's about persistence. But being persistent is important. Being consistent is important for you to continue to do something because you know that it will help you. Um, and I hope that answers your question. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. I wish you all the best. Thank you, doctor. I strongly agree with you. Now, moving on to the next question, I call upon Nur Wazida Hassana Binti Roini. Over to you, Wazida. Hello, doctor. Hello, Hi. doctor. I'm Nur Wazida Hassana. I'm a Form 5 student. And after listening to you, I was wondering, there are myriad types of fields to choose from when we are picking out what we aspire to be in the future. Say that I want to be an entrepreneur like one of your students. Can you tell me how greatly the profici proficiency of the language can affect my career? Um, that, that's a very good question, Wadida. So when you want to become an entrepreneur, definitely English language uh, is important. Basically, whatever that you want to become, English language plays a part in it. So the most important thing is for you to be able to master the communicative part of the language where when people speak, when you speak to people, when you communicate to people, people can understand you. So you might not be able, you might not want, or you might not be able to write, uh, what do you call it, a, a Shakespeare level of writing, or you might not be able to deliver a speech like Barack Obama or Joe Biden. But for you to be able to master the communicative part of the language, for you to be, to be first to be brave enough to speak the language, and when you speak the language, people can understand you, uh, that's already good enough. But I'm not saying that you should stop right there. Learning is something that we continue to do. We definitely need to improve. But that alone is good enough, because when you look at uh, people in countries like in Europe, in Germany, Italy, Russia, when they speak English, sometimes, uh, Malaysian, our English is way better than them. But why are they able to be more developed than us? Why are they, why are they able to be more connected to the rest part, to the other part, to the rest part, to the rest of the world than us? Because they were able to, uh, well, be bold enough to speak the language, to use and speak the language, and they were able to communicate communicate effectively uh, using the language. So there might be some grammatical errors, some. A uh, long choice of vocabulary, but as long as you are able to speak and people get your message and you are able to get understand people, that all, that that alone is good enough. But then we shouldn't settle on being good enough because I'm sure uh, no Wazita, she's she's a she's a go getter. She wants to be the best. You know, being being average or being good enough is never good enough. Okay, that's all. Uh, I hope that answers your question. Uh, all the best, Nova Zira. Okay, thank you for the advice, doctor. You're welcome. Thank you, doctor. Yeah, thank you. I completely agree with you. Um, the next question is from Muhammad Taufik Hidayat. Over to you, Taufik. Hello, doctor. Hi. I just want to say I'm amazed to see your achievements. Um, well done. Well, I would like to ask a question and well, the situation to my question is like this. Because based on my experience and my friends' testimonies for, I get it around the country, I believe that no one can agree more when I say English class is where people are the quietest. In other words, students tend to be silent on English classes. What do you suggest on this matter, and what can we do to increase the contact, the contact, the contact between the English teachers and the students? That's all from me. Uh, so that that that's a that's a good question. I understand. In English class, uh, students they tend to be quiet, perhaps because they you know they don't want to speak. They are not. They feel very shy to speak the language, and you know they if they speak it, uh, people might laugh at them or they will speak their native tongue. Uh, uh, so what we can do is that 
you know, it's an English class. So an English class is a language class. So what's the purpose of language? Why do humans come up with language hundreds of years ago? It's for them to communicate, to talk to each other, to converse. And that's what we need to have in, in English language class for, for teachers and for students to be able to talk to each other uh, and not necessarily in a formal way, which what people think usually think that it should be. It can be just me asking you, you know, how's life? What did you do last week? Uh, and then, you know, you taught me things about what you did. And then we were like speaking at casual level because that's what that's the purpose of language itself is to communicate. Uh, so, you know, and when we talk about communication, we start with uh, speaking and listening. You know, we speak and listen. Uh, and speaking and listening, they are natural language skills. Natural language skills means language skills that you possess naturally. Or like in your mother tongue, uh, when, I, when I was born, you know, I listened to the language being spoken at home and I slowly learned to speak the language and of course, along the way, as you learn to speak, you learn to listen. So language, uh, listening and speaking skills, they are, they are natural language skills. So they are the skills that we need to pay attention to, uh, that focus on developing first, because they uh, precede the learned, langu the learned language skills. The learned language skills, it's reading and writing. So reading and writing, they, we, you, you, Children don't just learn them by listening to people around them. It's something that they have to be taught. And to a certain extent, it require formal, it might require formal education. So naturally, it's supposed to be listening and speaking that come uh, first as a set, and then reading and writing come along. Like I'm Bajau, so, you know, I mean, it's a bit difficult because usually for native languages, uh, we don't really have the written and re reading part. But yeah, that's how language works, and uh, a lot. And of course, w uh, since you know, on on everyday basis, we use uh, language to communicate at at a more casual, personal uh, context. So, and that's the context that we need to have in the classroom, so that we can build, uh, so it can become a foundation to a much stronger uh, environment where we can learn the language and you know take it further a notch you know from one level to another so i i hope that answers your questions there's a very good question topic it's it's it, 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 it might require some sort of theoretical explanation and and you might want to become an english language teacher one day okay thank you hey, here go. <laughs> thank you doctor i couldn't agree more with you Ladies and gentlemen, we are now moving to the questions from the live chat. Let's see which question had been chosen by the organizing team. The first question here is this. Uh, I'll just read it, although I believe uh, Dr. Sihaz what would see it. Okay, from Azizi Su. Doctor, how do you come across the ideas on what to research? What drives you to start your research? Does the research that you have con conducted will affect the pupils' proficiency in terms of elementary pupils? Uh, Over uh, to so you, that's Dr. a good question. Uh, yeah, that's a good question, I think. Um, uh, how do I come up with ideas on what to research? Obviously, uh, reading plays a part in it. I like reading research articles, <coughs> blogs, websites and watch YouTube on academic materials, academic content. And uh, when you access this kind of academic materials, they are able to give you ideas on what to research, on what you are like trying to focus on. And of course, the other one that helped me to research is basically, you know, why do we do research as a teacher or innovation? Because we want to solve a problem. So, you know, when you're teaching, you know what kind of struggle that you are facing, what kind of mistakes uh, and errors that your students are doing. And you feel like you want to mitigate that. You feel like you want to show them or help them learn, master that particular part of the language or the, that particular language skills. So that's where you uh, start researching. Um, and then uh, does, it conduct, does it affect the purpose proficiency? Well, I think that's the research that you have conducted. Um, well, basically when we do research, we want to identify uh, 
whether a particular innovation or technique or material is effective uh, and how effective it is, if it is effective. So I think that's what we are trying to say. Um, um, obviously, you can you can definitely, you know, it's a research. So you can look at the data that you have received. Uh, you can do, look at your students based on their behavioral responses, based on the quality of their answers or quality of their responses, whether they show some sort of uh, improvement. And sometimes a research, it doesn't have to be so formal and statistical. Uh, let's say in your, in, in your previous class, uh, your students, they didn't want to talk at all. They didn't want to say anything at all. They just kept quiet. And you applied this particular technique, and then it seemed like it helped them to speak a little bit, but maybe it's still, they speak a little bit, uh, but maybe there are some elements of the native tongue, but then they learn to sh use some few English words. So you can say that they, 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 you can definitely observe some changes. So that, with that, you can identify, uh, determine how effective your technique is, and it might help you to exploit more or to do research more on it. So I hope that answers the question. So I'm looking at YouTube Thank you, too. I'm looking at the comments. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Doctor. Yeah. Totally agree with you on that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, moving on to the second question from the live chat. Let's see what we can have here. Uh, from Ismail Madil, wonderful colleague here. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm reading that question. Yeah. Here. <laughs> yeah. No, it's okay. It's okay. I'll, I'll just, just take read it from here, Charles. It's okay, Charles. I'll just take uh, it from here. So it's my oh, idea. Right. He, asked a, he, asked, he asked a question, okay, but my view is that most of our students are too shy to present themselves, especially using English, hampering the language learning process. What is your comment, Doctor? So that's very true. When I first started teaching, I was like, not even a single student wanted to do anything. No public speaking, no debate, let alone presenting at conferences overseas. But one most important thing is that we need, to, as teachers, it's our job to make the students feel they are safe, they are they are being supported, that they have somebody they can refer to, somebody that will always be there to assist them. So that's very important for us to create an environment where the students feel safe. So whenever I talk to students, I talk to them at personal level. You don't have to worry. I'll be there for you. Whatever that you need, you can refer to me. I will find my best to help you. And of course, before they do the presentation, we practice a lot and end up we practice and rehearse whether it's a physical practice or we practice on Zoom. And most important thing is that for the students, for me to get my, what I usually do is that I always get my students to do everything on their own. So if you're presenting, you are using slideshow, you need to do your slideshow in English. Now, it doesn't matter whether, uh, you know, it has lots of mistakes. It doesn't matter whether it has, uh, you are not confident with it, but don't use Google Translator. Don't use too many words. Do your slides in English language and I will help you edit and give feedback on, on your slideshow. And once they are done with the slideshow, we move to script. I know we'll, you need to write script. They can, you can present impromptu, but script will help you to, you know, will help guide you in your presentation. So they write the script. And what I do is I edit them. Now, I, it, sometimes it's much faster if I write the script for them, if I do the slide for them, but then they will not be learning anything because they are not doing it. It's me who is doing it. Or in, this, in this case, it's teachers who are doing it. But let them do it themselves. Let them own the work. Like, this is my work. This is my project. This is my idea. I'm doing the slideshow. I'm doing the script. I'm determining. I'm, I'm the one who uh, uh, determine our practice schedule. When are we going to practice? Which conference that I want to present my work or which competition that I want to take part? So they have lots of authority, autonomy, and creativity in what they do. But what we do is monitor, help them, edit them with their language, and guide them. But so long that we are able to create the environment where they feel safe, and then they feel like uh, there's, there's always somebody that will help them with that. And then the fact that they have their own freedom and autonomy, I think I believe that will help them to, to present, uh, to do it. Okay. So most of my students, they don't really, they, they are not really able to present them in, in, in a very you know, perfect way. They still make lots of mistakes, but the key point is for them to be able to do it first. And then, you know, because what they do when once you know, a few students do that, and then the other students will be able to see that the, the, the students who will be coming to school will be able to see what their seniors did. And then they become, they are able to, you know, it, it, it helps them to have that belief that they, they are able to do it. If their senior can do it, if their peers can do it, they're able to do it. 
you know, it it spreads like a like a culture uh, among the school, and and I hope that answers your your question, uh, Mr. Mr. Jo Mr. I can't remember his name just now, <laughs> Mr. Ismail. Ismail okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Doctor. I really agree with you on that. Now, ladies and gentlemen, with the final question had been asked and responded, it concludes our question and answer session. With that, I thank all the participators in the SAID station for your contribution. We really appreciate it. I'm sorry that we can do more, but nevertheless, I believe that right after this, we are more than ready to grab the key to open the world. Ladies and gentlemen, as we are nearing towards the end of our program, it is now a time for us to express our heartfelt gratitude to our special guest speaker, Dr. Mohammad Sirhajwan wow, Ede, so cool. in the form of virtual certificate. Thank you so much, Doctor. Moving on is the QR code and link for attendance, which is the key for the ESET. Attendees could just either scan the QR code or click the link, fill in your particulars and answer the simple evaluation questions and you'll get your ESET. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to proceed our program uh, in this wonderful afternoon, we will be uh, having the closing speech of Kota Belud District Education Officer. Thus, with great pleasure and honor, I would like to welcome Mr. Muhammad Fazli Abdul Rozan to deliver his speech. Please, welcome. Okay. <clears throat> Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Very good afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Charles, uh, the moderator for the session today. Mr. Ghazali for setting the du'a. Dr. Syed Zwan Idek, uh, our distinguished guest speaker from College of Education Lakeningau. Uh, first of all, I would like to apologize for the technical problem earlier. And uh, I would like to thank all for spending your time with uh, joining the session. And we hope that, I really hope that you enjoy the session and we learn from uh, much more uh, from the sharing from Dr. Muhammad Sari Zwan Idek of College Vocational Keningau, a very experienced and well-known English language teacher. And from his sharing, uh, we know that English is important in our life. And for those who master English language, it is an advantage for us if we could master an, uh, the ling English language. And also, uh, we learn from Dr. Sarizwan so has one uh, sharing that you can do anything that you want uh, with the condition that you believe in yourself. And only you can determine what you want and what you, you need to be. Okay? And the motivation, the motivation starts within. And from there, you can generate the motivation. Okay? The motivation uh, to, to all others surrounding you. So you are, uh, it starts from us. It starts from ourselves, actually. Okay, success starts from ourselves, and and uh, Dr. Sarazwan has proven that that uh, regardless of race, background, uh, okay, and our origin, that we can be at par as others intentionally also. So thank you, Dr. Sarazwan, for uh, great sharing. I, I hope. Uh, the students in this uh, session will in, uh, will benefit from it and for teachers uh, continue your effort your great effort in educating our students uh, be motivated uh, be great and uh, focus for the for our students benefit so thank you congratulations also to the community members to the technical team uh, of PPD Ketablut and also to the principal and teachers of Sertika Pekando Ketablut for organizing this session. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you so much, Mr. Muhammad. 
Kota Belud this district education officer for the closing speech. Ladies and gentlemen, we have now come to the end of our program. Therefore, on behalf of the organizing committee, once again, I would like to convey our deepest gratitude to our special guest speaker, Dr. Muhammad Sihajwan Idek, for being with us in this program. We really appreciate that you managed to be with us despite your hectic and tight schedule. We look forward to having you again in the near future. Next, I will also like to thank the officers of Kota Belut Education District, which have been supporting us all along. For without them, we won't be able to help this program. Moving on is to our very supportive principal, Mr. Jaino Sayer, for always baking us up in this program. Thank you so much, Mr. Francis. Not to forget my amazing team in the English panel. I thank you guys for everything. Last but not least, to the teachers, students, parents, and everybody that has been with us throughout this program, thank you so much for your support. With that, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to say goodbye. But I think goodbyes are sad, and I'd much rather say just until the next time. Thank you.